We just found out about Takoy Sumler. Any, any comments on his transfer? Yeah, I talked to Takoy today. He came in and we had a good conversation. He'd like to get back uh, a little bit closer to home. He's going to drop down a division and look at some 1AA schools. So we told him we'd help him any way he can. So. Any on the timing? I mean, two days yeah. in the camp is a little more unorthodox, it seems like. I don't think it's unorthodox. I mean, he wants to get a little closer to home and wants to drop down a division, so, I mean. Was he on track to play here and have sex still? I don't know. He was only here two days, so. Did you, last year. Did you bring somebody else in right away? Uh, I don't know. I mean, we're at 105, and I don't, I got to talk and see if there's anybody. There wasn't anybody that we had, you know, we'll, we'll, we got to see. We got to meet as a, it just happened just before practice, so. We always meet as a staff after our last meeting tonight, so we'll talk about it. We'd like to get another guy in here, because especially for legs in practice, so we'll, we'll see. Was it a surprise to you? Did you see it coming? No. I mean, I, did I see it coming? No, but I'm, I've said this all the time. There's nothing that surprises me in this game, so. <laughs> Is this a position to shift one of the deepest on the team? With, you know, a lot of I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't. we got a lot of guys there. I mean, I think we have 15 or 16 in camp, but, you know, in terms of returners, you know, the only guys – that have played a ton out there are Josh and um, Daryl. So, you know, from a experience standpoint, it isn't. But from a, you know, in practice itself, there's a lot of guys out there. So, is it just sort of an inherent risk of recruiting guys from that far from home, or is it case by case? I don't think so. You know, I mean, it's it's just you, you got to. I think kids want to go to college where they want to play. I mean, he was real honest. He'd like to go to one double A school and play. So. I mean, and that's going to happen. Not everybody can play when you have 85 kids on scholarship. You know, we're only allowed to travel 70. So at, at some point in time, um, some kids, you know, they, they they have to understand their role. And, you know, and it, it, it happens. And I think it, it happens in a lot of places that if I'm not going to be playing, maybe I should go somewhere else. So we told me to help them in any way we can. What are your impressions of Kyle Long after a few days? Very, uh, Kyle's really athletic, you know, and obviously I thought we, we knew that coming in. Um, he's done a good job, you know, it's only three practices in, but it has done a real good job picking up because the one difference with Kyle that we usually like to get those kids in, especially junior college, in for spring practice, and he wasn't here for spring practice. So for him to be where he is right now, I'm actually, you know, not surprised, but pleased. Um, and we'll see how he progresses, but he certainly is a physical, athletic, um, and, and really gives us another presence out there that, that uh, you know, we need. We need another guy, um, especially at the tackle spot. Um, you know, when we got two guys that have played a little bit, Jake and, and Nick, but it's kind of unproven besides that at, at, at our tackle spot. So um, really add some, some depth out there and add some competition too. So. Is there an urgency with, with him with having one year for you guys or for him? No, there's nothing. I mean, he does have one year, but it doesn't mean we have to – we're all going to spend 24 hours with him. I mean, he, it's – it's the same sense of urgency we have with everybody. Everybody we brought in, whether you're a freshman or you're a JC transfer, we want you to play this year, you know, and we'll determine if you can, uh, how well do you pick up the system, how, how physically can you handle it in your conditioning, you know, but for every kid that we recruit here from since I got here till whenever I leave here is I want those kids to come in and play right away, whether you're a freshman or whatever. We don't recruit kids and say, hey, come here, you'll sit for a year, get yourself acclimated, and then we'll see if we can get you in the mix. We're going to throw them in the deep end right away, and the guys that swim real good are going to end up traveling with us and playing with us, and then the other guys will throw a life preserver to them and try to help them out get through the whole thing. But um, I, I think he came here with the plan on playing, and, and I like that plan. So. Is he appealed for a second year? Or is that I think there's an appeal process going in. From my understanding on that, Aaron, that, that all goes through the compliance office. So they have to um, – he had to be enrolled first, so that started sometime in the summer. But I haven't heard anything one way or another on that. Coach, to today, is, is one of the transitions more significant <laughs> than the other going from – Is one what? Is one of the transitions more significant than the other going from nothing to shells to shells to pads? I think if you have an immature team, it is, because all of a sudden, you know, you get kids that, well, we didn't have pads on, so now we'll go out and just knock people out. But not this group. They understand how to practice, and, and – there's not a whole heck of a lot of difference. It's just obviously we can we're touching the ball carriers now. You know, when no pads, we're not wrapping them up because we don't have any pads on. But these kids, they did a really good job. You know, I brought them together just before the first team period to reemphasize what we want. We still don't want people on the ground because that's when injuries occur. We're not cut blocking anybody. We're not leaving our feet to make a tackle. But for our first day in, in shoulder pads, um, I thought they did a really good job. Apologies, Chip. That's OK. Uh, of that wide receiver unit of yours, has any of the, the players stood out to you after these first three days? And it stood out in a good way? Not really, and not negatively or positively. We All we do, and you guys have seen it, it's we want to get as many reps as possible. So it's go, go, go. And then when we get a chance as coaches, it's 
you know, we're really evaluating when we go in and watch the practice tape. And then I'm also aware of, I've seen kids where, you know, you call them one day wonders, one day he's like, oh my God. And then the next day, you know, you come out and you go, what happened? He's not even practicing today. So, you know, it's got to be a consistent thing. And um, all of them have flashed at times, but, you know, the biggest thing, and that's why, you know, we got 22 practices before we make a, a, a real evaluation of it because it's got to be a consistent thing. It's not just, well, that kid flashed one day and had a really good, Tuesday three weeks ago it's it's who on a consistent basis can we depend on that he's where he's supposed to be when he's supposed to be there and, and is catching the football but I've been pleased with those guys go through three practices but you know we'll, that you'll, you'll start to see and next week is really the litmus test because they kind of hit the wall after five or six practices and you see you can handle it because we do ask those guys to run a whole heck of a lot in practice and it's it's because we ask them to run a whole heck of a lot in games so it'll be interesting to see who continues to, to go through but after three days I'm, I'm pleased with the group so you mentioned on media day that you We'll find out when they get here who's in shape in the summer. You won't listen to other people if someone's throwing up on the field. You'll yeah. see it. How were the guys? You see anyone? No, I, I, I'm really happy with our conditioning right now and just on how we practice and, and, and what those guys have done. And that's that's really been my thing. It's, you know, I it, it, if there's a, I mean, and there is a test, but, um, and really part of our test is if you're here in the summer, you don't have to take the test. The only test is for the guys that missed a few things. And, and uh, all of our newcomers always test. But I think for upperclassmen, there was only like two or three in some of those guys, you know, because they had an academic thing or something like that, just didn't make it to enough of Coach Rad's workouts to, to pass. But um, so far, overall, as a, as a total group, they we're, we're in as good a shape as, as uh, from a conditioning standpoint as, as I've seen. So. Are they competing for a job right away, and are you evaluating from day one? Oh, yeah. It's all it's all an accumulation. You know, if someone's going to wait a week or two now to say all of a sudden now it's on, then they're going to get passed on by. So every every single day, you know, we're evaluating and, and we're juggling it and trying to see, you know, where those guys are, and they got to understand that. And, and the one thing we tell them is that we evaluate you in everything, and that's, that's where I think some kids are still learning that. So you may be the scout guy covering a kickoff, and we're doing a kickoff return drill, but we're evaluating you as a kickoff guy when you're running down the field. So if a kid comes in and says, hey, I'd like to be a part of special teams, well, we've practiced special teams for five practices and you haven't done anything. And he's like, well, I'm not on the unit. Well, you're on the scout unit. So if you're practicing kickoff return, you should be practicing kickoff. And and that's the way a lot of guys have stood out here in the past. And Coach Oz talked to him last night about special teams, but it's it's how T.J. Ward made his mark. You know, three years ago when we were running kickoff return, we couldn't block Avery Patterson running down the field on kickoff as a scout player. So we were smart enough as coaches to get Avery Patterson on our kickoff team and at the end of the year, two years ago, he was our best kickoff cover guy. But that showed because in preseason camp, even though he was a scout player, we couldn't block him. And we felt like we had a pretty good kickoff return unit. And if we can't block him, then kid must be doing something right. So they, they can everything we do is an evaluation. And they're, most of the most of our guys, young guys, got to figure it out a little bit. But for by and large, everybody understands it. And so they all got to be playing hard because everything we do is filmed. So we get a chance to see everything on tape. So any up, any update on Colt Lairla? 